Greetings, music lovers. Rick Ferguson, rickfergusonmusic.com. Thank you for joining me in this third video uh, featuring winners of the 2020 Young Women's Composition Competition here at the Musical Offering in Evanston, Illinois, and taking a brief look at female composers who have had a significant impact on my life as a listener, performer, and just lover of art in general. So let's start with that, shall we? Uh, Shulamit Ron. Uh, Shulamit Ron is an Israeli-American composer born in Tel Aviv, I believe in 1949, and uh, came to the United States when she was 15. She studied at the Manus School of Music, uh, and, and she never looked back. Uh, she was the second woman to win a Pulitzer Prize for musical composition in 1990 with her symphony. Uh, Ellen Tafesvillig, if you remember from the second video, was the first woman to win that prize in 1983. Uh, Miss Ron has uh, served as professor of composition at the University of Chicago from 1973 until her retirement in 2015. Uh, she has served, I believe, for seven years as composer in residence for the Chicago Symphony. Uh, she has had, again, a huge influence on a generation and more of, of young composers. Uh, some of her favorite music, uh, given the fact that she's really composed across a very wide spectrum of uh not just stylistically, but in terms of the forces that she works with, some of my favorite pieces of hers are really solo works. Um, and so what I want to do, I want to highlight one of these solo works, a rather recent one for solo viola. And there is a fascinating interview, video interview with her that I want you to see, that I want to share with you uh, about the inspiration behind this work for, for solo viola called Inspirare. And uh, she, she really talks about, uh, in many ways, getting back to her roots and then taking what on the surface is sometimes the, the simplest musical material, but then being able to make so much out of that material. And so I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. So I want you to see this interview with her and, uh, and really get a sense from the inside out, uh, in her own words, how this, how this wonderful inspired work came to be. Enjoy. I'm trying to go back to my first contact with Melia. I think she had emailed me and introduced herself to me and told me about this really intriguing commissioning um, project that she had in mind. And um, this was uh, something a little different, unique, and I like that right away. Her idea was to commission a work where um, the work would use an existing composition from the viola repertory as a point of departure. Isperare is Italian, meaning to inspire. And I really wanted to integrate contemporary works with standard viola literature in a meaningful way. I think it's very important for performers to commission and perform new compositions because it's the voice of our time. It's the way classical music can stay connected and it's the way classical music can evolve. So I knew I wanted a commissioned piece for this project. And I didn't know Shulamit Ron personally, but I was a huge admirer of her work. And I find her voice to be one of the most important of this generation. So it was a dream. And I just thought, well, why not? I can just try. And I wrote back to her and I said, yes, I'm going to think about that. We all, of course, are all composers, are drawn to music of uh, the past and the present, and uh, this is a huge source of inspiration for us, existing music. I started to replay in my head, in a sense, some of my own favorite works of the viola repertoire. And yet the thing that kept um, 
popping into my head was actually a work that is not a viola piece at all, but rather there is what I would call a viola lick that is really prominent and really special. And that is uh, the first of the songs in Berio's folk songs. There's a wonderful little viola idea there. You know, sometimes it is the simplest materials that you can do the most with. When I first received Perfect Storm by Shulmeet Ron in the mail, I opened up the package to a beautiful handwritten score, and somehow her handwriting helped me to find depth in the piece. In some sense, writing a solo piece, to me, is like uh, doing a portrait. It is the soul of the instrument that I try to explore in a solo work. The piece has places that are pure and lyrical and stretches that are um, very intense and emotional. And then there is a whole section that is in a kind of fiddle style, like a country fiddle. And she does that fantastically. And right from the start, she understood it, she felt it, and she really went for it. <laughs> I really love working on pieces that have not been recorded or haven't even been performed before because it's wide open. Shulamit Ron provides a lot of terrain for the performer. Some of the descriptors that Shulamit uses in this piece are becoming more aggressive, menacing, in quotation, sunny, mysterioso, in a fiddling style, so it's really a gamut of emotions. It's a playground for the performer. And there's something very connective about the way she wrote the music, and I find great joy in that. Each composition, at some level, you start with a blank uh, slate, and you hope that uh, you are uh, dreaming up something that can become a reality. And Melia delighted me in making it reality. So that was fun, right? Um, one small little footnote, uh, if I put on my piano teaching hat for just a moment, there is a wonderful set of, of piano forehands pieces that are wonderfully accessible and a lot of fun to learn, uh, simply called children's pieces. And I have used those uh, as teaching material but also really to talk about uh, more contemporary music and sort of develop my students' ears uh, in, in terms of enjoy uh, the enjoyment that we get out of playing a lot of this beautifully crafted music. But specific to these pieces, using the properties of the piano in various ways that are very specific to it as an instrument and really having a lot of fun in the process. So for piano teachers out there, I really recommend these children pieces by Miss Ron. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice size collection and they're a lot of fun to work on. So let's turn to now uh, Fiona Abney McPeak. Fiona is the first prize winner in our high school division for the Young Women's Composition Competition, and she submitted a one-movement woodwind quintet, her woodwind quintet number two. And it is such a, a well-crafted and highly effective uh, movement. 
I'm excited to share this with you. In particular, I want you to listen to the role of the bassoon uh, in this particular piece. So Fiona is 16. She lives here in Chicago, and I'm certainly hoping that we're going to be hearing a lot more of her. So here is uh, Fiona Abney McPeak's Woodwind Quintet number two. Enjoy. So congratulations to Fiona. Uh, we're very proud of this wonderful work. Thank you for submitting this for our competition. And we look forward to hearing more of your music. And, uh, you know, at the musical offering, it really is a big part of our mission to encourage and support uh, not just contemporary music, but younger up and, com uh, up and coming composers and to allow these kinds of opportunities for them to submit and have their works performed. So congratulations to all. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll be sharing more with you.
Take care. Bye-bye.